Greetings, this is an instructional video on how to do closed captioning. My name is Tom Bonner. I am currently the closed captioning work study for CLC. I wanted to make the resources that I use available to any other student that may do this at one point or another. The software that I use for doing closed captioning, for doing screen recording, I use a software called BB Flash Player Express. This is freeware. It allows you to record everything that's seen on your monitor as what you can currently see. I'm sorry, my monitor, I like to do different things, and as you can see, mine's very busy. But this BB Flashback Player is for screen recording. I use YouTube Downloader to do conversion of what BB Flash Player, BB Flashback Express Player does. It'll convert it from an ABI file to an MP4 file. I already have one video that I've done that I'll be using as an example that I do need to convert. So I'm converting the flashback player ABI file to MP4. You can open up YouTube Downloader. Again, this is a free piece of software. You click on the Convert tab. Click on Select Video File and find the video you wish to convert. In this case, Mine's accessing post quiz view. Click on the video, click open, and underneath, select the convert video format that you wish. Being I'm converting it to MP4 so that anyone can open it, I will select iPad video. And I usually set this for high or optimal just to give the best quality. Once again, click convert video it'll go through the entire video size it'll convert it to an mp4 and then it'll compress it so it's a much smaller size Once the video is done converting, like you can see now, it'll say progress under 100%, and then this window can go ahead and be closed. The third piece of software that I use for my process is Movie Captioner. This is a paid software. It costs $100. It's very easy to use, very intuitive. As, as you can see, it's a very basic um, user interface. It allows the exporting of a QuickTime file that has the closed captioning embedded, or even a YouTube caption file. Typically, I like using the YouTube caption file because YouTube has many resources that we may want to take advantage of later, including the ability to upload multiple languages under closed captioning, up to 160 languages to be exact. So once you have Movie Captioner opened up, you can go ahead and click on Load Movie and find the video that you wish to view. Mine's right here, up close and personal, accessing Post Quiz View. The first thing it's going to do is ask you to save the project. I always save mine with the video name itself. That way everything gets linked together. And of course, once it's opened, it will put a little clip up in this corner. I usually turn this beep off. It gets very annoying. What this does is it tells you when the end of the four second loop or whatever loop size you have is done and repeats. If you want to do different loop sizes, you can. This has the ability to go do loops all the way down to one second, pretty much as high as you want. I recommend keeping it at three or four seconds. I use four, but some people use three, so on and so forth. With this software, once you hit start, it'll go ahead and loop the first four seconds until so you can type up what is seen. As soon as you're done and you know exactly what's in the first four seconds, you hit enter, it'll bring you to the next four. So I'm going to go ahead and do probably seven or eight examples for this. Hello, this is an instructional Hello, this is an instructional
is an instructional video on how to access post quiz view. Instructional video on how to access post quiz view. Instruction view. This is useful for when you have to access a quiz. This is useful for when you have to access a quiz. This is useful for a quiz to see questions that were incorrect or to compare quizzes to see questions that were incorrect or to compare quizzes to see questions that were incorrect or to compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic. Compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic. Compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic. Compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic. The CLC D2L platform. As you can see, when you type, it'll continually loop the same thing over and over again. The last one, just to give that example, I looped several times just so that I could type it and so you could hear what goes on. The other nice thing that happens about the software, say for instance you realize you had a spelling error after you've done four or five of them, you can go back, click on whatever you spelled wrong, and you can actually change it right from this window. Um, or if you didn't put a, an apostrophe in the right spot. One thing about closed captioning is you do not have to be perfect on every punctuation. I know for the English teachers that may drive them a little crazy. The only time that I pay attention to, to um, punctuation is if a sentence ends in the middle of a four second clip and you have to move to the next sentence. If you do find out that you get four or five in due, you have to change it back, you just click on the newest frame and you can go down to queue next. And this will cue the next frame. You can go ahead and hit start again and continue editing. The first thing I want to do is log into the. The first thing I want to do is log into the. The first thing I want to do is the CLC D2L platform. Of course, the CLC D2L platform. Of course, the URL is CLC. Dot the URL is clc dot ims dot mns ims dot mnscu dot edu. You'll want to log in with your star ID. I'm going to go ahead and finish there for now. I'm going to complete the rest of the closed captioning on this as as you can see it's very very simple to do once I'm done doing the full vid the closed captioning I will come back and show you how to export it again this will be in the same movie file I'm just going to pause out um, you'll see a big jump when I'm finished hello again as you can see I've gone through and I've done all the videos for all the closed captioning for this video. In Movie Captioner, it'll timestamp every part of the video. As you can see, it'll do um, hour, minute, second, and millisecond all the way through. When this video is exported and uploaded to YouTube, YouTube will use this timestamp to make sure that it puts the correct closed captioning line on each time frame. The video that I did was only four minutes. Um, as you can see, it was a total of 62 sections, 63 sections. Once the video has been finished, there are multiple ways that I usually export it. I'll hit export, and unless the teacher wants a hard code or a hard copy on DVD, I usually click on closed ca YouTube captions. Again, this will bring up the window to do a save as. I always name everything with the same name whenever doing a video. This keeps them all together. So you just make sure it has the same name. Click save. It will go through and export it instantly. If a teacher wants 
a physical copy on a thumb drive or on a DVD on any removable medium. This will export again in a quick time format with the closed captions embedded into the video. To do this, again, you click Export. You click on Embedded QuickTime Unicode. This will bring up a window again. What I've done is I usually click on the old video, the MP4 that's been converted. And I usually do something like dash CC for closed captioning. Or closed caption. This makes sure that you know which video is what. I'll go ahead and hit save. It does a pretty quick um, save as with the video. Mine brings up um, uh, QuickTime Movie just to make sure. Just make sure that everything works. I'll usually click play. I'll view a little bit of it. Hello, this is an instructional video on how to access qu post quiz view. This is useful for when you have to access a quiz to see questions that were incorrect or to compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic. As you can see with QuickTime, it shows on the bottom of the screen right underneath everything that you can see. The reason why I like doing QuickTime is most everyone has it because most every, everyone has an iPod of some sort. It's a free piece of software and you can view it. Um, I may add this to a higher resolution video file, uh, like a 1080p, that way it can be viewed better when it's blown up. But for right now, when it's in a smaller view, it can still be seen. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I can go ahead and close this. Again, just because people can change things, it'll ask to save it again. So I just hit save. Uh, that's from another video. I'm just going to do this. Once I have the video done, I usually will open up your internet browser choice. I like using Google Chrome, but this works on any browser. Um, you can go to youtube.com and I'm just going to go ahead and upload the video quickly. Make sure that you have it in the proper channel. Being that I've got my own channel in the schools, I usually click on closed captioning for CLC. If you have your own school channel, you'll want to upload it to that, of course. Being that this video can be public, I'm going to find the video that's being uploaded right here. Drag and drop works really well. By default, I have all the videos set up to be on private because not every teacher wants everyone to be able to find their video. When it's on public view, the video is searchable on the YouTube channel. You can find it easily. When it's in private or unlisted, the only way you can get to the video is through a hyperlink that is given to you. It will not be searchable by any means on Google or YouTube as they try to respect people's requests very, very well. Usually once the video is done, um, or close to done uploading, I'll just click on publish. It'll go through, it'll give you a nice hyperlink. So I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this hyperlink and I'm going to grab the URL because I want to be sure that teachers can share this. If this is another school doing videos, I do suggest that you make a spreadsheet to keep track of all the videos that I've done. I've been doing this for about three weeks now. As you can see, I've got 16 videos that have been done. Um, because I do this around a full-time job, 
I get to these and do them as often as I can. Some weeks I'm not that the best at doing them, but some weeks I can knock out four or five of them. Again, I, with this, I do suggest that you pick up Excel um, to do this in. This, oops, this will allow you to keep track of everything that has been done. It also gives you the possibility, if you're working with a um, a different set of teachers to give a master list of all the videos that way in case they lose the URL that you originally give them you can get it back to them easily so I'm going to go back okay that gave time for this to be published once it's been published and viewable it'll give you the link saying yes your video is published you can you can view it you can watch through it as you see mine starting right now to upload the closed captioning, you click on Video Manager. I used to close out of the other tab. You click on the little arrow by Edit and go down to Subtitles and CC. It'll ask for the original language of the video. Mine is in English, of course but it does allow you to search 160 other languages um, Sri Lankan Romanian, Italian, you name it, all the other languages. This will come in handy if we ever have students from other nationalities where they do speak English, but it's very rough. Um, but we have, and it can be translated. Well, the closed captioning can be translated anyway. You click on English, it'll bring you up a new set of windows that says Add Subtitles or CC. Again, you can click on English or you can search for any other language. The more languages that you have, of course, the more closed captioning files that you can upload. I click on English, and because I already pre-made a file, you click on Upload a File, and I click on Subtitles File. Transcript is one if you have a text that you can upload, you can upload all that. I'm, I don't think I would suggest doing that because people can change as they speak. Subtitles, at least then you know all the wording is correct because it's been pre made, it's been pre checked. So you click on Subtitles File, Choose File, and you find the little file that looks like a Word document um, with, with Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Vista, whatever it is. You mouse over it, it'll tell you it's a text file, which is what this is. Click on Open. It takes a little bit for it to upload. If it's the right file, and mine wasn't, it was the text file, I wanted the other one. This is the one that you want, the one that when you mouse over says SRT file. Shows that even I'm not perfect. So once it's done, it'll say, you know, the title name, and then it'll say .srt. Click on Upload. It'll bring up all the timing blocks that you've already done. You can just do a quick mouse over, make sure that everything's spelled properly. Just do one last look over. Everything on mine looks correct. So I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. And now the video is published. Now to, to make sure that everything's working properly, I usually go back to video manager click on the video title and click on hello this CC. is an instructional video on how to access post quiz view this is useful for when you have to access a quiz to see questions that were incorrect or to compare it with a newer quiz that you took on the same topic as you can see with this it'll show up in black text inside of the video to turn CC on and off you just hit close the CC icon you click off. Well, this has been a full walkthrough on what I do when I create a closed caption video. The entire process from start to finish uh, for a nine minute video usually takes an average of 40 minutes. Um, for shorter videos, of course, it'll be shorter 
than that.